G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I know it's grand final week, but I did say I would try and commit to doing a trade uh, rumors update once a week on this channel. And uh, Thursday seems to be the day I've been doing it, so we'll roll with that. Uh, a little bit has actually happened when I woke up today to prepare for this video. Um, there were a few more trade stories bubbling away under the surface that I'd actually missed this week, so it's good to catch up. Uh, the most notable one is of uh, D Dylan Shield. He's gonna feature in this video, as well as Todd Goldstein, Jay Kaczynski, and uh, a few other ones that I hadn't come across before today. The trade period officially kicks off, I think, the uh, about a week and a half after the grand final, which puts it about Monday, October 9th, I believe. That is when the trade period is going to kick off. So between now and then, I'm going to do my best to try and cover the trade rumors that uh, pop up, as they inevitably do around this time of year. Before we crack into the video, you know I have a goal on this channel of getting the people who watch my channel regularly, well, as many of them as to subscribe as possible. And I want about 50% of the people who watch the channel to have subscribed to the channel, if possible. Unfortunately, after a bit of progress, we're trending in the wrong direction. Only about 44% of people who watch the channel have actually subscribed. This could be down to the fact that we potentially have uh, a few new viewers so if you are enjoying the content it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe get me close to that 50% mark be much appreciated all right let's kick things off with the uh, Dylan Shield deal which has been reported in recent days uh, by John Ralph in particular it says that Essendon and St Kilda are reportedly in nego negotiations in a swap that will involve Jade Gresham joining Essendon through a free agency and then the resultant pick being traded back to Essendon so that Dylan Shield can join St Kilda. Now this one's murky. The way it was first presented, um, I have a lot of issues with and I feel like it's a bit misrepresented. So I'll just map out exactly what was reported and then we'll talk about what I actually think is going to happen here. So according to John Ralph, uh, there's going to be a bit of collusion, I suppose, between Essendon and St Kilda to generate a first round draft pick as compensation for Jade Gresham. So what would happen is Essendon signed Jade Gresham on a contract that is worthy of band one or band two compensation, which should generate rate either let's say pick 13 or pick 20 for St Kilda. Then it's reported again I'm going to keep attributing this to John Ralph because I don't think he's going to be right but he reckons that St Kilda would then offer pick 13 or pick 20 for Dylan Shield. So if I'm getting this straight Essendon signed Jade Gresham for nothing but salary. They get rid of Shield, which opens up a bit of money uh, to get um, Gresham onto their list. Then St Kilda get, uh, say, compensated with 13 or 20 and give that pick for Dylan Shield. So St Kilda lose Jade Gresham, they lose pick 13 or 20, and they gain Dylan Shield. Now, look, I can see why St Kilda would uh, be open to getting Dylan Shield. He is 31 next year and they need some midfield reinforcements, but I don't see it happening in a deal for pick 13 or pick 20. This seems way too lopsided to me. I can't imagine them overseeing a situation where they lose Gresham and a first round draft pick to get a 31 year old Dylan Shield. So in this scenario as well, Essendon would walk away with Ben Mackay, Jade Gresham, pick 13, and lose Dylan Shield. This doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Why wouldn't St Kilda just let Gresham leave under free agency, keep pick 13, and then, in theory, to be honest, I think they're more doing Essendon a favor than the other way around by taking a 31-year-old Dylan Shields contract off their books. If anything, this should be a very cheap deal to get Dylan Shield to their club. I think it was Sam Edmund even said, list managers I've spoken to said they would be flawed if the Saints gave up a first round draft pick for Dylan Shield. My best guess here is that there is potentially gonna be a swap of clubs for both Shield and Gresham to uh, between Essendon and St Kilda, but I think the way it's been reported of how it's gonna go down has been a mistake. So my best guess here is that Gresham probably does join Essendon as a free agent, probably on band two compensation. That would be pick 20 in this hypothetical scenario. It's hard to imagine him getting band one compensation. St Kilda would then hold picks 12 and 20 in the draft and probably give up 31 for Dylan Shield, considering his age and considering they're actually doing Essendon a favor in terms of uh, the salary cap that it's gonna free up for Essendon if they're gonna try and get Mackay and uh, Gresham onto their list. It could be cheaper than that. We've seen, obviously, in the most recent past, uh, Gold Coast actually giving up draft collateral to take money off their books. I think this has been mistakenly reported on by John Ralph. It's my gut feeling. It doesn't make any sense to me. The next update I have for you is that Ben Mackay has actually nominated Essendon and probably should have led with that one. That's actually happened since the last trade update that I do. He was uh, did. He was still uh, deciding between Hawthorne and Essendon and he's decided on Essendon in recent weeks. So now we have to wait for the AFL Secret Herbs and Spices and how they calculate band one compensation or band two compensation. North Melbourne are pretty adamant it seems that uh, they will match any deal that doesn't generate band one compensation. As I said in my video about North Melbourne's priority picks, I uh, have 
read a big footy rumor, so obviously it's true, that Essendon are unwilling to offer a contract that's going to generate uh, band one compensation and they're more willing to potentially negotiate a trade for Ben Mackay that's closer to his actual value. Because let's be honest here, no one thinks that Ben Mackay is actually worth pick three. So this one I think is going to be quite protracted and drawn out and painful, I reckon. The motivation for Essendon to not offer a big contract for Ben Mackay is that they don't want to dilute their first round draft pick here. So we'll see what happens, but uh, at least we know that it's likely going to be Essendon more so than anyone else, and uh, it just remains to be seen what the free agency compensation is. Otherwise, this one will get pushed out to trade period. In more recent news, Todd Goldstein has uh, formally told North Melbourne he'll be seeking a move away from their club. Uh, we already knew about that, but as of today, at least as I read it, he has nominated Collingwood at his as his preferred uh, destination. Apparently Essendon and St Kilda also express interest but it is the Pies who need him as a bit of reinforcement. Obviously they got uh, Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox there as their rucks and Goldstein despite his age he at least uh, provides some depth. He's an unrestricted free agent so it's not going to cost them anything in a trade and given his age they probably don't need to offer him a massive contract either. If Goldstein wants to play on we're better than join Collingwood who are potentially going to be in the premiership race for a number of years to come. So Goldstein to Collingwood seems like it's more likely to happen than not. In other news we saw Jacob Kaczynski from the Hawthorne Football Club request a trade to Richmond this offseason, which is quite interesting. Kaczynski is 23. He was picked 52 in his draft. Potentially a good money ball sort of uh, recruit for the Tigers, who obviously need to replenish their list with youth and don't have the draft collateral to make a serious shake-up of this year's draft, at least at this stage. And it's kind of interesting, Hawthorne are already on the market for the key forwards already. We know that they've targeted uh, Hayden McLean from Sydney and Jake Riccardi and uh, got knocked back for both. And most recently, they've been linked to Mabio Chol as well. So despite the fact they're on the market for a key forward, Kaczynski is going the other way and most likely to Richmond, it seems. There has been a further development in the Shane McAdam to the Melbourne Football Club story. Uh, negotiations have apparently have, have begun between these two clubs. Makes sense. Neither of them are remaining in the finals. But Adelaide has come out and requested a ready-made player in return for Shane McAdam. The Crows did offer a three-year deal to McAdam to extend with the Crows this year, but he's obviously requested a trade for the Demons, probably with more of a, maybe not guarantee, but more of an offer of starting game time, you'd think. Obviously, the Crows have uh, pretty good small to medium forward options. But apparently, the Crows have requested, uh, they've named two South Australian players. Okay, guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. Harrison Petty or Tom Sparrow, both of those players I would have thought it would have more trade value than Shade Me Adam personally. I think he played like seven games this year, McAdam. Unsurprisingly, the Demons have said no. So uh, the Ds are willing to only part with a third round pick or low round pick swap according to the Herald Sun. So there's probably nothing to this. I think uh, a deal still gets done. It's probably just one of those things where Adelaide come out and, um, you know, make a big stance with their first offer and see what they can get. There's a bit of an update on two Carlton players that are still out of contract, and that's Paddy Dow and Zach Fisher. John Ralph from the Herald Sun has also uh, reported that these two players are most likely to join different clubs. We have talked about that a little bit in the uh, in the past on this channel, but to hear it again sort of confirmed, it does suggest that it's more likely to happen than not. I was a little um, curious about the Zach Fisher one. He came back to the side late in the season, started playing some good footy, but obviously didn't play in the final. So according to Ralph, Paddy Dow is going to St Kilda. Zach Fisher, um, who hasn't formally requested a trade, he still hasn't had his exit interview apparently, according to the report, but there is a good chance that he is going to end up at North Melbourne on a four-year deal. So the Roos, even though you know they're losing Ben Mackay and they're going to be up to their neck in it with the draft and stuff like that, there's a good chance they end up with two mature players in this trade period in Dylan Stevens and Zach Fisher, which you think can only help. We'll talk about Hawthorne again. They are well and truly in the action in this year's trade period, as most recently Essendon's Massimo D'Ambrosio has uh, formally requested a trade to Hawthorne. So when a player gets to the point of requesting a club, there's a good chance it's going to go through. 
Essentially what's happened here, I believe is Essendon offered a one year deal and Hawks uh, have offered a longer deal. It's not actually disclosed what it was, but you think probably two years. He's only played eight games this season. He played eight games the year before and he was obviously drafted in the 2022 um, uh, rookie draft or at least the, the mid season draft actually. But interestingly, the article that in which that was reported also said that the Hawks have missed out on their bid to land Fremantle wingman Liam Henry. So the last we heard about Liam Henry was that he was most likely gonna end up at St Kilda, but it wasn't confirmed that that's where he's requested a trade to. They were simply reported on as the front runner, but now this definitively says the Hawthorne missed out on Liam Henry, which suggests perhaps the Liam Henry to St Kilda deal is further along the road than I previously thought. The other trade deal that uh, has kind of gone under the radar for me, I hadn't actually heard about either of those until today, but I'm sure I'm probably one of the only ones, but Carlton are into two players, Elijah Hollands of the Gold Coast Suns and Hayden Crozier, and particularly the former Hollands, that seems like it's more likely to happen than not. The Blues obviously have um, not an exodus, but they have a, a number of players leaving. Potentially, you know, Josh Honey, uh, Ed Kerno's retiring, Lockie Plowman's retiring. We just talked about Dowan Fisher. First of all, Hollands is potentially going to get reunited with his brother. He's only played uh, 13 games since being picked 7 in the 2020 draft, but uh, it was pretty good in the VFL Grand Final for the Premiers, the Gold Coast Suns. I can't believe I just said the Premiers, Gold Coast Suns. But I think he had like 33 touches and 8 clearances or something like that. So there's still form there, and the Blues have identified him as a potential, you know, forward wingman midfield and that's kind of a position of need for them. And of course, the romantic notion of reuniting the two Hollands brothers as well. Sam Edmund uh, from SEN has actually said that he is understanding that Gold Coast will allow him to leave and it's probably going to be a future second round selection. But the other player that Carlton is potentially interested in, uh, potentially as a de delisted free agent, is Hayden Crozier of the Western Bulldogs as a sort of medium, small defender there. And obviously with Plowman leaving, I know Plowman's much taller, but it's some good mature depth for the Blues. And uh, that one, it's probably less certain than the Hollands one, but as a delisted free agent, there could be a good value uh, pickup for the Blues there. And finally, uh, you know, in all of the recent news of the priority picks for North Melbourne and the draft hand and the collateral that they're accumulating right now, the talk of a Harley Reid trade hasn't quite gone away. I think I'm going to actually address that in a separate video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. I'll make a video probably from an Eagles perspective. That'll do for now, guys. Let me know if there's any other trade stories you want me to discuss on this channel. Uh, otherwise, for now, we'll park it probably until the big 2023 grand final. Obviously, I've been making a lot of content on that. My grand final preview's out. I'm thinking about vlogging the day here. I'm going to be watching in the UK from 5.30 a.m. I won't be live streaming, but I will uh, be making plenty of content around the game as well. So thanks for watching for now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.